All right, guys, we're out here today with this Underwood Extreme Defense, Extreme Defender 9mm. So on the left here, we have, it's a 68 grain version plus P. I'll have to check the box here for the advertised velocity in a second. On the right here, we have a 90 grain standard pressure. Um, some of you might be like, well, wait, that's not even a comparison. Those are vastly different. I just did 380 over here, previous video. Go check that out. Matter of fact, I'll link it in the description where we did both 68 grain, one standard pressure and one plus P to see what the difference was. And basically the difference is just obviously going to be velocity. So, um, if you want to see 68 versus 68, granted it's, um, 380, but again, I'll put a link in the description if you want to check that video out to see how much just the extra velocity made with the same bullet. Um, but these are virtually the same. I mean, as you can see there, that is the same bullet. It's just the 90 grain is longer and the rear of it is filled in, whereas the 68 grain is shorter and they hollow out the back uh, to get it down the 68 grains there. But what this is going to display is a, a what a vast difference in velocity will make uh, because these 90 grain standard pressure are going to be much slower than the 68 grain plus P pressure. Uh, I got the chrono set up here, so hopefully we can get some reads on those uh, to see what velocities we're actually getting. But you should see more penetration with these because they're heavier, even though they're going slower. Uh, but I anticipate a much larger wound cavity with these because they're going so much faster. So I'm using my Taurus G2 here. It has a 3 inch or 3.2 inch barrel, something like that. So we're using, you know, a subcompact like what most guys will carry. Obviously, if you shoot them out of a full length barrel, you're going to get even more velocity and even more damage. But let's see what they do in a subcompact here, what like most people are concealed carrying. Um, it is a pretty cool day out. We're in the low 40s. Ideal temperature for this Nox 10% ballistics gelatin is 39 degrees. I brought it here in the cooler on ice, so we should be good on the temperature. That said, my calibration is a little on the light side today. Uh, to be within spec for 10% ballistics gelatin, you're supposed to shoot the BB 590 feet per second, give or take 15 feet per second. And you're supposed to achieve uh, between 2.95 and 3.74 inches of penetration. Uh, we're right on 3.74 there. So we're at the maximum allowable amount. Uh, so generally I try to come somewhere in the middle, uh, but with it being on the maximum allowable amount there, it's just a little bit thinner than what it might have otherwise been other times. So you might see an extra half inch to an inch penetration uh, due to that, but technically it's still in spec. And real quick before we get started there, you can see there's the advertised velocity for the 90 grain standard pressure, 1400 feet per second. 68 grain plus P advertised 1800 feet per second. Now that is gonna be from a full length barrel, so I do expect to see lower numbers than advertised here since we're shooting out of a three inch barrel. So I don't want to do too much of a reveal here because I want you guys to go check out that 380 video. But we got the wound checks in the front from the 380. Uh, the back one's pretty clear except for there is I left one of the bullets from the 380 in there. Um, but I'm going to spin these around and put the more or less untouched block there on the front for these 9mm ones. And by the way, uh, typically in my later gel tests, I started doing a t-shirt test only and then the four layers of denim because some people complain about the four layers of denim being too thick. And nobody wears four layers of denim according to the... Look at my coat, guys. This coat is at least as thick as those four layers of denim, and that's just the coat itself. That doesn't count if I'm wearing any layers under it because it gets freezing here in northern Ohio. But anyways, these are barrier blinds, so they don't have hollow points to clog up. So I'm going to go ahead and skip the t-shirt because it's not going to make a difference, and we'll just go ahead and shoot through these four layers of denim. All right, so I'll have you guys positioned on the side here. That way you can see the impacts. If we get a read on the chrono, I will read it out or show it to you. So up first, we'll do the 90 grain standard pressure, and then we'll do the 68 grain plus P. All right, advertised 1400, and even from that shorter barrel though, 1352, so not bad. So these are the 380 holes, so there's my nine entry. A little high on the block, but it's all captured, so no issues there. Oh, no, it's not. Missed out the top. Look at that massive cavity, though. Jeez. That's like two inches there. Or more. Two and a quarter. So, I guess I gotta take another shot here. Come in a little lower on this one. So, we can see the cavity real nice there. Now we just need a capture. Uh, you'll want to pay close attention here. I actually end up striking the 380 bullet that I left in there, so I'll be sure to pluck them out from here on forward now that I learned my lesson there. I'll slow it down for you so you guys can see it, but this explains my confusion throughout the video of which was which. Mm -hmm. 
pretty close to the same read on velocity just a little over there 1334 so it'll probably average mid 13s there's my entry there so a little lower right there there's the wound cavity from that one again really freaking big i can't wait to see what these 68 grainers do so this had me confused for the whole video pretty much because i didn't realize that i struck the 380 bullet so um it took me like three takes to figure out what was what and then i still didn't quite have it right at the end so hopefully i can edit this in a manner to where it's not too confusing to you guys uh, but anyways that nine millimeter one is there on the bottom the one on the top was the 380 one that was in there that we smacked all right, here we go with the 68 grain. Really excited to see what this one does. What I do here? <laughs> All right, so I thought that shot, oh, I forgot to pay attention to the chrono. If I crossed it, it would have messed it up. 1693. So I thought it came in a little low on that, which I did. But you see it still hit the block there almost center you know just a half inch lower than a lot there's the permanent from that absolutely massive two and a half inches or more there it splits clear down to the bottom then you can see the bullet kind of arced down and it disappeared so i think it's actually in the table there oh i gotta drop my gun and there's a hole right there where it's set, so it's in the table. We'll shoot another one, try to get a capture here. By the way, there's from up top real quick. This just looks so massive because you got two there. That Remember that one's right under it? And, yep, it was slightly more left. So some of that on the left there is from the other one. Uh, so there's your over top from the 68 grain. Looks somewhat narrow from up top, but remember on the side it was absolutely massive. Um, I'm thinking the penetration will be less, but we got to capture one first to find out. And yet another surprise while editing, I did not realize that I did not get this shot on camera. 1727 on that, so it looks like out of that 3 inch barrel, those are going to average around 1700 feet per second. There's my entry. We do have a capture. Much further penetration than the 90 grain, so I'm assuming that's from the extra velocity um this was pretty far away from these so you can see it's got its own separate channel over here i don't really think those affected it at all plus i can tell you from all the gel tests i've watched the people will hit pretty much darn near the same spot and the bullets the exact same bullets will still end up at the same distance so it generally doesn't really affect it anyways even if you do cat hit some uh, previous permanent cavities but this one's so far over i don't think that's an issue anyways you know nothing out the top that's all sealed and then we're clear back here so it had to have been yep nothing split there uh it had to have been from that extra velocity given that extra penetration so that's interesting the uh, 90 grains facing forward and so is the 68 grain that's interesting because I didn't really expect that much extra penetration. I figured, if anything, it'd be shorter to about the same because that lighter bullet. But I guess that extra velocity is just carrying it that much further. But I want to verify, so I'm going to take at least one more of each and see if the results uh, replicate themselves. And one, one last look before I do that. So there's from up top. There's from the side. It did tear it up pretty good. It's crazy that you're even getting this spiral tearing effect clear back there i don't know that the 90 grain did that yeah it didn't seem to it's just kind of like a cleaner line there um but here's from up top so again this one's kind of a mess from that 90 uh, the other one's right under it but i mean these are just massive cavities guys so i'll throw the denim back over but i'm not worried about the chrono since we got reeds on these let me go ahead and get these in here do one of each here and see if they come to the same distances all right so the first one was the 90 more towards the right and the second one was the 68 okay so I see this. The one on the right here is the 68 grain, and the one in the center is the 90 grain. 
I mean, regardless, these are very impressive uh, permanent wound cavities here and penetration depths uh, from both versions. And another big advantage to these, other than the fact that they're barrier blind, so you could shoot these through wood and, you know, thin metal panels, bone and whatnot, and they're still going to do the same damage. They're not going to clog up like a hollow point. Um, your carry weight is lighter because instead of carrying, you know, 124, 147 grain bullet, you're carrying only a 90 grain or a 68 grain if you want. And I also want to mention, um, lighter bullets always have less recoil if the exact same powder charge is behind it. And so even though this one was a plus B, plus P, having that 68 grain in there, it did not kick any more than the 90 grains did. And I actually feel like it was a little bit less recoil with those 68 grains. So if you carry these 68s, it'll cut your carry weight down a bunch uh, compared to like the standard 124 grain 9mm bullets. This thing's like half the weight. So it'll make your carry weight lighter. And then the recoil... Um, going plus P, it's not any more than a standard pressure, and it's probably honestly less than a standard pressure 124 grain. All right, third take on this here. Not sure how the video would be edited. Uh, I kept getting confused on which ones were the 90s and the 60s. So um, here's the two 90s that it captured. All right, so I got these plates where I pulled them out of. So um, I believe that was our first 90. It was sitting right here, and you can see that wound track back in there. That's where the second 90 was sitting, and I can tell which is which because... You can see there the 90 grain is longer and then we had a 68 setting right there you can see that little little blop right there where i plucked it out and then the other 68 grain we captured right there so our two 90s came in at about 12 and a half about 14 and a half 15 depends on how i hold this camera it kind of like messes with it but you can get a pretty good idea idea there about 12 and 15 on the 290 grains and then the 68 grains we got uh, 16 on this one roughly and 18 on that other one and again this one is just a 68 grain earlier from the 380 test that i did again link in the description if you want to go check that out and you see right there well, that one's deformed a little bit but that's 68 grain from 380 but there they are from the nine so on your left there is your 90 grainers on the right the 68 i thought i found it interesting i think i mentioned this earlier the rear is kind of filled in on the 90 so it's longer and it's filled in to achieve the 90 grain weight compared to the 68s they're shorter and hollow in the bottom there but yeah that'll do it for today guys i appreciate you watching again i hope you have time to go check out that 381 i'll link it in the description if you guys want to get any products you see me using the video shooting bags steel targets paper targets target stand chronograph earmuffs and more links are in the description I do, at least as of to date, have a 9mm gel test playlist if you want to go see a bunch more 9mm tests that I've been doing. I'll probably eventually have up a 380, 40, and 45 list as well when I get enough of those done. But uh, as of now, I've been doing a lot more 9mm because that's what most people carry. But I appreciate you all for watching, and I hope to catch you on the next one. If you guys stuck around in the end, I really appreciate that. So I got a little bonus footage for you here. These are what I was typically carrying, at least for several years in nine millimeter i really love the gold dots so this is a standard pressure 124 grain gold dot so just pop one in there real quick for comparison couldn't do much better now i think that was about a dead center shot let's see what we got here velocity 1101 with 124 grain bullets my entry was right here This is, we had previous wound channels here from the 380 video. So that's our 9mm gold dot. And there she is right there. It looks like it just kind of flattened the nose, peeled back a little bit there. And that's been my experience with these. Take the denim away, it mushrooms flowers perfectly. Uh, with a denim, you kind of need plus P to get full expansion. So let me pluck that out for you. Uh, eh, not too bad see it's still more or less fully expanded but they do peel down a little further if you take the denim out of the equation or again plus p they peel down even more but what i was more interested in seeing was the permanent cavity there and i don't know if you can tell but the cavities are definitely bigger from those extreme defender bullets so um, those things are no joke now granted if this had peeled back more if there was no denim 
or I used plus P for the higher velocity to peel it back more. Or if you shot this exact same one through a longer barrel pistol and thus achieved higher velocity, you would have a bigger wound cavity from that. But nonetheless, there's our comparative results today. So those to me are a more impressive round and that's probably what I'm going to carry from now on because they leave a huge a permanent wound cavity there. Um, they're barrier blind. It reduces your carry weight. I mean, in my mind, it's just the all around perfect uh, carry load these days. Now some gel test videos coming up here on these gold dots. I also do have the plus P versions, so I'll have a video of that as well. I might just do both in the same video like I did here today, so stay tuned for that. And in case you guys were wondering what the retained weight was, I think this is on the wrong. Come on, the wind's affecting it. This thing is very, very sensitive. Let me get this set up. That's a reloader scale, so it is very, very sensitive because it's meant for weighing little grains of powder and it is a little breezy out here today the slightest breeze gives it a read because wind does weigh something when it blows in the right direction 123s let me see it zero it out 123.7 123.5 so nearly 100 percent weight retention there and measurement on that 0. 0.5100 so basically 51 caliber of expansion there so like I said, I have a formal test of this coming up and standard pressure and plus P and we'll do a layer of t-shirt only and four layers of denim with both standard pressure and plus P. So stay tuned if you don't want to miss out on that. Um, also guys, I have these linked in the description as well if you want to get yourself one of these little scales or the micrometer here. So that will finally be the end of this video. Hope you enjoyed the bonus footage and hope to see you on the next one.